Hello everyone and welcome to WGBS TV Live, brought to you by supermanhomepage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. My name is Steve Eunice. In this, our March 17th, 2020 yes. show, we're going to be covering a range of topics, including uh, Superman Red Sun, we're going to be talking about the latest episode of Supergirl, and we're going to be talking about comic book stuff as well, and there might be a few... COVID-19 references in there for uh, just to keep relevant, current. Anyway, uh, to let you know how you can get involved in tonight's show and how you can participate, uh, let me introduce you to my co-host, Mr. Michael Bailey. Hello, Mike. Hey, Steve. Now, WGBS Live is all about Superman and not about COVID-19, which sounds like, come on, Eileen, which is how I know how to pronounce it. It's the only way I keep it straight in my head. But WGBS Live is all about Superman, and we want to hear from the Superman fans that are watching us live on YouTube, which doesn't seem to be a whole lot right now, but maybe everyone's out doing, like, home St. Patrick's Day celebrations here in the States. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, if you do want to get involved, in which we do about halfway through the show, if we don't have a whole lot going on, uh, there's an easy way to do it. Uh, but you will need Skype. Go to Skype, find the Superman homepage, uh, Message us that you'd like to be on the show, wait for us to get back to you, and we'll go from there. Now, two very important things. One, wait for us to uh, message us and wait for us to get back to you. Don't just call or anything like that because it can screw things up. Also, if you use an external speaker to watch WGVS Live, please turn that down for the time period you're on the phone because we are on a delay and that can kind of screw up the audio. Indeed. And if you're watching this live, you're doing it either via our YouTube channel or our website. And seeing how we're beaming this live, uh, for our YouTube listeners, we invite you to participate in the comments there on YouTube and get involved, ask questions, make comments. Michael and I will refer to those as the show goes on and you'll be part of the show. And we want to thank our sponsors and patrons, Douglas Meacham, John Patrick Van Pelt and Tina Murray. Thank you for your support. Now, uh, Mike, it's uh, been an interesting week. Uh, things are developing uh, rapidly in the world at the moment with uh, what's happening going with the coronavirus and people are self-quarantining. Uh, there's that social um, distancing. I'm you know, at, by myself in the Fortress of Solitude here at the moment trying to keep well away from people, uh, but it's obviously not as easy as it uh, might sound, even though people in my profession, I'm usually pretty much home on my own all day, every day. Um, it just seems to be uh, people are really taking it, uh, well, I hope people are taking it seriously. Well, some people are taking it seriously. Unfortunately, last weekend, there were a bunch of people that are like, we're going to go out anyways. And it's, uh, I realize that, you know, one our society in general has never gone through a pandemic before, and that's fair. Uh, I think the last major pandemic here in the United States that really, like, I mean, I was watching something today. The uh, <clears throat> one of the pan pandemics in the eighteen in the seventeen hundreds killed like five thousand people in uh, Philadelphia, which was like ten percent of their population at the time. Wow. Uh, so, you know, it's not something we've ever gone through before, and unfortunately, some governments have been a little better about being prepared for that, and some governments got rid of those people two years ago. <laughs> uh, so, um, I'm kind of glad you're in the Fortress of Solitude right now if you're going to cough like that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's just, you know, the, the, for, for, it's really weird that we've gone from most people thinking that this is a hoax because of certain people, and now everyone's kind of on board that this is a bad thing. The This is really hard. Uh, I am not, I can't do my job from home. Mm. Uh, I can't sell printers here. Uh, it's, it, it would just be, that would, I mean, I'd be a telemarketer at that point. Uh, but for the moment, things are a little strange, and hopefully if we can flatten the curve here in the United States, things can kind of return to normal, and the same thing in Australia and all the other countries that are going through this. Yep, indeed. Um, but if uh, you're looking for some, you know, an hour of time to spend, uh, you know, you're bored, you don't have nothing to do, you're, you're at home, 
you can't go out uh, or you don't want to go out, then you can do worse than spend the next hour with us as we talk about all things Superman, Supergirl, and DC Comics related. And uh, we usually like to start with movie news. And today is the actual release date of Superman Red Sun, the animated movie uh, based on the 2003 uh, story by Mark Miller. Um, and you've got a copy right there in your yes, cl- clean little fact, hands. I- Yes, I, my my uh, we have hand sanitizer, so we managed <laughs> to kind of have some. Um, no, I got mine today. Uh, as I was telling you before we recorded, uh, Amazon Prime members sometimes get stuff on date of release, and it told me it wasn't going to get here till Wednesday. But when I came home tonight, my wife handed it to me, and uh, I'm excited that I'll be able to get to watch it this week. Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to checking it out myself. Uh, the animated film has been getting some pretty good reviews from people. Other people saying it's not as close an adaptation to from the comic book story as they might have liked. But uh, all in all, I've seen some positive remarks. Haven't been able to watch it myself. Was hoping to have received an advanced review copy from Warner Brothers like they usually do. But uh, I'm going to blame the, the coronavirus that it didn't arrive. Yeah, I, it seems like a weird thing not to send you at least a digital code. Uh, but which you think would be easier than sending you physical media to another continent? Yeah, you think uh, that? But I, I, I could be wrong on that. So, but uh, we do have a, well, Warner Brothers release a number of clips this week um, from the animated film. I'm going to show you a bit of one here. This is America's response to the Russian Superman. They created their own Superior Man. With the emergence of the Soviet Superman, the Cold War reached a freezing point. Our nation reacted to this new threat as it had to, by doing everything in our power to hold back the communist tide through force of arms and force of will. But as recent lessons in Korea have taught us, conventional weapons aren't enough when one man, one alien, has the power to bring entire nations to their knees. And so, we turn to the only person who could shift the balance of power. Thank you, Mr. President, for both your service to our great nation and your confidence in me, a confidence that, I believe, has been rewarded today. Many of our citizens have lived in fear of the Soviet Superman, but no longer. As of today, The United States has its own living weapon. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you... Superior Man. So there's just part of the clip that Warner Brothers released online and it's uh, available on our website to watch in full, as are a number of clips that were released this past week in uh, light of the March 17th release of... Superman Red Sun on 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray Combo Pack, Blu-ray Combo Pack, and DVD. And it's been available digitally for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, I yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny that that happens now because despite the stuff being released digitally, I really don't see a whole lot of people spoiling it. No, true. Uh, which uh, I, I don't know if it's just because people who watch, <laughs> who like get the the movie digitally first don't like pay much attention to social media but it just seems like i mean i I saw a couple people say hey it was really cool or hey i didn't like it but no one's like well here's what happened scene one you know Mm. Mm. minute one it's it's really kind of cool yeah it's been good that way uh warner brothers home entertainment also released a number of these pretty cool character graphic posters if you like or poster images um i'm going to Bring up a few of them here right now. Here's the one for the uh, Soviet Superman. Uh, you've also got one for Lex Luthor, and there's also one for Superior Man, and there was one for Wonder Woman, and another one for Batman. I uh, love the graphics. I had a couple of animated versions of these as well, or similar types of graphics on Twitter and social media uh, promoting the release of the film. Batman looks like he's holding a cup of coffee. Like he's just he's just, <laughs> he's just angry. 
<laughs> yeah, he's just ang- yeah. The way the belt, you know, with, with the little small graphic that I'm seeing on the screen right now, it just kind of looks like, yeah, I'm here. What do y'all want? Sips coffee. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, love the promotional imagery that they released for this animated film. Uh, looking forward to watching it myself, and uh, probably this time next week when we sit down for WGBS TV on the 24th of March, we'll be able to review it and to discuss it between us. Yes, absolutely. Looking forward to that. All right, well, uh, on the TV front, the latest episode of Supergirl aired there on Sunday night and last night here in Australia. It was titled Reality Bites. It's the 15th episode of Season 5. Uh, I just finished watching this like half hour before the show started. And... Um, I was expecting this one to be a little bit cringeworthy. I wasn't sure exactly what to expect. I was thinking it was going to be very heavy-handed um, with you know the kind of uh, messages that uh, the CW like to put forward in the Supergirl TV show. But I was actually quite impressed with this episode. I thought it delivered a pretty solid message, an emotional message. Um, it was um, could have been attributed to any... Uh, minority group and not necessarily just transgender you know it can be really attributed to any uh, body who feels um, suppressed or you know oppressed in the in social society and I thought it was quite well handled as far as the story storyline was concerned yeah I, I was watching it and as I was watching it I was sitting there discussing it with my wife because we didn't watch it the night it aired we watched it the next morning because we were actually <laughs> We were actually watching the debate Sunday night, so I was doing something uh, politically minded uh, with my Sunday evening for some bizarre reason. But uh, I was just like, there there was a moment in the episode where Mia calls the detective that she that's that's working on the case, and she asks if they have anything, and he's like, well, you know, we're still processing stuff and all that. She's like, okay, so you don't have anything? Well, I'm going to take care of this. And I looked at my wife, I go, she, you know, I go, I, I realize that the trans community does not really get the visibility with law enforcement that they need and that this sort of thing happens a lot. But, you know, you do have to process things. It takes a while for a lab to kind of work through it. Yeah. And, and my wife looks at me and she goes, well, it's a 42 minute show. <laughs> and I go, OK, but here's the thing. That doesn't matter. Uh it, I'm really kind of glad I sat on writing my review from usually I, I write it right after I watch the show but because I had to go to work I like had pretty much the entire day to think about it which you know kind of took my mind off the fact that people are panic buying and I realized that at the end of the day I could have as many legitimate concerns or niggles or complaints or whatever about this episode but at the end of the day, that part of the episode, at least as far as that part of the episode is concerned, none of my opinions matter. And I don't mean that in that my opinion shouldn't be considered. I'm just saying this was to making a specific point for a specific uh, portion of the audience. The statistics they cited in the episode are 100% accurate. Mm. And the fact that for a moment on a national network on a high, you know on a, on a highly rated television series that has a lot of visibility people that are usually disenfranchised on a regular basis got to see not an actor playing somebody who's transgender but a ch- transgender actress say the things that they want to say mm. it was wish fulfillment i've had 44 years of wish fulfillment in all of my media I've been catered to nicely, so I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to sit back on this one. This isn't this is this isn't for me, uh, and I don't mean that I didn't enjoy it because I did. I liked the message. I liked what they said. I liked that Nia faced a really dark part of herself, and Kara. She was able to talk about that with Kara uh, at the end of the episode. That was a good bit of character development. For Nia, it was great seeing her roommate. We could see a little bit more of her, like her social life. Mm. I loved that Brainy just, without hesitation, just jumped into helping. Just like, you know, that like, and that thing at the end when he's like, "We we at the DEO support our sister superheroes," and I'm just like, "That's really cool that he that he not only 
not only helped her in the short run, but collected all this other stuff for the detective. I guess from his perspective, uh, it didn't clash with his task that Lex Luthor requires him yeah. to do. So it was something that he was willing and able to uh, contribute to uh, because it was he obviously still has feelings for her, and but this particular incident didn't clash with Lex Luthor's mm-hmm. goal. So he was able to help. Um, some questions from people watching uh, on YouTube. John saying, uh, asking a couple of questions. Uh, is this a different virtual reality than the one Andrea Rojas has was using at Kako? No, it's the same. It's just an extension, I guess, of the the launch of those uh, it's obsidian. The obsidian. Yeah. Yeah. So Platinum, it's the same tech. It. Same tech is just an, uh, I guess, a more advanced or uh, a, a launch that goes out to the wider public. Um, why was Nia creating her own profile? Because she wanted to use that as bait for this guy who was targeting transgender people on that particular dating app uh, so that he would come after her so that she could then uh, punish him. Uh, so that was why she was creating her profile. Did Cara and William actually go on a date? Yes, they went to the pool hall. They were playing pool together. That was their date. Uh, so that is the answer to that. Um he called it something else, and I've heard that name before. What did he call it? Uh, eight ball. He, no, he 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 called there. There's a, I think it's a British version of it. Oh, so there's pool. There's, this, there's uh, snooker. Yeah, that's that's the one. He he mentioned that. It's the second time I've seen that in a in a movie with a British person uh, talking about. Cool. They always compare it to that. So, and you really need to kind of look into what that is supposed to be. Well, uh, there's there's different types of games that you can play on a pool table. Uh, mm. Snooker is one of them, played with different types of balls. Uh, you got the ones with the numbers on them. That's eight ball. And then you got the red, the green, the blue, the purple, the yellow. That a different. It's a different style of game that's uh, you can play snooker with. So, yeah, there oh, okay. are there are a number of different games. I know, know this course we've had a billiard table growing up at at our house and. <laughs> Uh, uh, I had they had a rule uh, poster with all the different games, so we tried them all. And um, yeah, so snooker is just another version that you can play on a pool table. Um, the big re- revelation from this was Jeremiah Danvers. Yeah, that um, that was really emotional and came out of nowhere. Uh, I, I was actually kind of surprised. I'm. I'm guessing it was used as a launching point for the next episode where um, we're finally going to see Alex in the Supergirl outfit. Mm -hmm. And, and given the timing of all of this, I'm wondering, like we were talking about last week, because we didn't see Kara really in costume doing a whole lot this episode. And next episode, it seems like we're going to see a lot of Alex in costume. Is this to kind of cover for the fact that she's pregnant? Uh, or, you know, because you, you usually don't know, ex, you know until about a month in. But when you finally get the test, you know, you're really not supposed to do a whole lot of physical exertion uh, in the first months of your pregnancy. So um, I'm kind of curious uh, if that's why we're seeing a Dreamer-centric es- episode and we're seeing what we're going to be seeing next week with Alex. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, Tina is asking... She doesn't understand where her powers come from. I'm guessing she means Alex in this upcoming episode. Um, that's I, I'm sure it's a virtual reality thing because when she was in yeah. the Obsidian Tech and she was in that um, first room that she comes into and she's looking at all these different options available to her, there was the one with Super yeah. Alex there that she kind of looked at and was like, oh, that's interesting, and then bypassed that to find the um, virtual Vegas that she was looking for. Yeah, I, I thought that was a neat... Again, it's a neat little layering in of what the next episode's going to be about. Mm. And talk about the next episode. Mind the Gap in the comments asks, isn't this the one where Melissa's supposed to be directing? So perhaps being behind the camera um, makes it easier for her to have somebody else be the main star than for her to try mm-hmm. to be directing an episode where she's heavily involved. Yeah, I, I, I think... Um... I think it's going to be an interesting episode, uh, and we got to kind of enjoy the episodes that we're getting. Mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because we do know now that they've shut down production 
on season five of Super Goal. Um, David Harewood came out on social media and kind of uh, let the news out that uh, yeah, we're we're not sure what will be happening there, how long they've uh, cancelled production for or postponed production for. We don't know how many episodes are already in the can that they filmed that they're editing together that will still be released. We do know that there is next week and the week after, but what happens beyond that, I guess, is watch this space. Yeah, and I am curious about how far along they are, because no pun intended with Melissa's <laughs> uh, current uh, situation, uh, because I remember it was during the break, like between crisis episodes, that we saw the uh, pictures of Kara like ex- ex- exposing herself to the press, and that didn't come up until like two weeks ago. So how far along, how far ahead are they? Because mm. it is March. So they probably were pretty close to finishing up the season, I would assume. You would think so. So we'll have to wait for an official announcement from Belanti Productions to see exactly what's going to be happening with most of their superhero shows who are of mm-hmm. are under the same um, same situation. Uh, Tina clears up the question saying it wasn't Alex's powers she was wondering about. It's uh, Dreamer's powers. Well, it's a hereditary thing as far as I understood. It's passed down from generation to generation in her family. It was supposed to be her older sister, if you remember that episode uh, yeah. last season, I think it was, where her sister was supposed to have received the powers, but uh, Nia uh, got them instead. And um, so they've developed over time because she's been practicing using them, and I think it was revealed uh, to her that she could do more than just have prophetic dreams. She could actually use the energy of her dreaming power or whatever in a physical format as well yeah i mean i i just assumed that one um it's whatever the writers need at the moment uh it's usually what happens with i mean <laughs> look at superman's powers during the silver and bronze age it was or even on the old george reeves television series hey we need superman to be able to walk through a solid object okay you're good um and he needs a cellophane know, s a, yeah, yes, exactly. That's a minor inconvenience. Uh, I, you know, I, I really not as much these days. I don't get really hung up on it. Uh, the only time I ever looked at it went, I don't know about that, is when she held back the wave. Because that, yeah. that was a lot of power. Yeah. And I, that was, that was, but that's the only time that I'm like, uh, maybe a little too far. Uh, but again, this is how these shows work. And she. it's interesting that she has... Having prophetic dream powers is boring visually. <laughs> yes. Because there's only... Because what is she going to do? Sit there and go, oh, okay, this is what's going to happen. Go do something about it. No, it's just, you know, give her something physical with her abilities. Yeah, exactly. It's better for the camera. All right, so we look ahead to next week's episode, and it is <laughs> titled uh, Alex in Wonderland, and it is the episode that uh, Kyla Lee uses a pair of, uh, in her role as Alex, uses a pair of obsidian contact lenses to visit a virtual national city where she takes on a whole new persona. Let's check out the trailer for that right now. Whoops, wrong one. What I want is a break from the real world. Let's go punch things. We need a way to shock her out. This isn't real, you know that. I am Supergirl. So there you have it. Uh, looks like uh, Alex is uh, in there, but uh, doesn't want to come out and thinks she's super cool and doesn't. It's not a reality that she wants to let go of. Yeah, and it's probably due to the depression and you know dealing with the fact that her father died and all that, and, and her job at the DEO. They've kind of, yeah, they've kind of you know hinted at the fact that this virtual reality can be something you're addicted to. Hmm. So. Uh, I, I just think I'm wondering, just within the confines of the of the virtual reality, if she's gonna like, is it a wig that she wears? Um, still more convincing than the one Melissa wore a couple of episodes ago. Just throwing that out there. Uh, but no, I'm looking forward to this. It looks like it's going to be at least interesting. Mm. And it's and it's kind of cool to see another character, you know, 
have these abilities. There was that it was a late season six episode of the adventures of Superman where all the other characters could do stuff Superman could do. And it turned out to be a dream, mm. but you know, that, that's always kind of fun to watch. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so, uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how Alex uh, deals with this. And I'm guessing having had a taste of the VR and the fact that that Martian equipment thing that she's got on her hand works for her in the VR world. And she still hasn't got a grip on how it works in the real world is probably another element to the fact that she's just prefers to be in this VR world, world where things uh, make more sense for her. Yeah, I, I, it, it's a good character. I mean, we, we haven't gotten to see a whole lot of Alex or as much of Alex in this season, I think, as in past seasons. So, Or it seems that way. I, I think it was because Crisis took up so much real estate the, in the front half of the season. And then, you know, those episodes were just so huge that now it's kind of nice that they get to kind of take a breather and step back while still advancing the plot at the same time. Yeah, uh, Tim in the comments is saying about Jeremiah's uh, death that, um, well, one, I wonder how, personally, I wonder how Dean Cain found out about the fact that his character has been killed off um, and whether there was some ulterior motives behind, you know, with his political views that uh, they didn't bring him back. Uh, and secondly, uh, will they recast? You know, people can come back from the dead and they have all these kinds of things. Uh, Tim in the comments is saying he'd like to see Tim Daly take on the role. Or George Newbern. Um, yeah. Both physically good for the for, for that role. In the right age. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. And, you know, Tim Daly would definitely have more of a, you know... It, it's funny, their voices are similar... But it, it, for me, Tim Daly is more of like your traditional Superman, mm. where George Newburns was always like the one that could get angry. Yes, and and and, uh, and it's it's a it was a subtle distinction, but they both worked very well. But uh, you know, you know, bring, have John Hames Newton step in. I mean, he'd be good for it. Yeah, what's the age difference between him and um? What's her name that plays Martha? I he's mean, plays uh, older. Uh, what's her? I, I believe he's either around the same age or Eliza. older than uh, Dean Cain. Oh, okay. So, yeah, because he was in his early twenties when he played Superboy in 1988. Hmm. So that's that's 30 years ago at this point. Interesting. All right. Well, we'll see if they. I mean, I think they've killed off the character. They're probably not likely to yeah. bring him back. Um, no. And they haven't really used him uh, or Eliza that much in season five, so I don't see a real need for the character to return unless they definitely want him to. All right, uh, well, beyond that, um, we have a description for the 17th episode of season five of Supergirl. It is titled Deuce Lex Machina, and it's described as. Lex proceeds to lay an intricate plan to bring Lena closer to him, defeat Leviathan's latest attack, and pit Supergirl and team against Leviathan. It is also revealed how Lex came into power after Crisis. This is an interesting one because we saw in this episode that we just watched Reality Bites that the people of Leviathan are very much still, you know, doing their nefarious deeds, you know, taking mm -hmm. these VR... Um, induced coma people um for their own purposes yeah i i i liked though that you you even though uh john crier wasn't a major part of this episode he was kind of you know they were still talking about what lex was doing uh kind of in the background but yeah it's it's it, it's funny because this was a dreamer centric episode next week's an alex centric episode the week after that is a lex centric episode that kind of leads more credence to the theory they're kind of given uh you know because because even though a woman who's pregnant can still be up and about you don't want to be throwing her around well usually that's <laughs> or, a or having her do a whole lot of, yeah or or I don't know how the harness fits, mm. but that could be a problem too. So well, your theory is quite yeah. I mean, I mean, even though it's a stunt double, she's still got to get on the ground to get back up again when she's hit. So yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah, no. Well, there could be something to it. We we don't know. Uh, 
and probably will never know, uh, but we, we'll, we'll run with it anyway. Uh, Tim, did Lex and Superman still have their falling out in the new Earth reality? If Lex never went to prison, would Clark still think of Lex as his friend if John Jones didn't do the mind meld on him? Um, well, Clark would st- wouldn't think of it because Clark was in crisis. With yeah, so he was part so. of. He knew. He knows what. Yeah. What went on, and he knows about the yeah. new reality. I guess so. He would still think. Yeah, of and, Lex I, and, as I know, and I know John. John did the thing to him because he had to, but I, I don't think he would probably have thought of. <laughs> I think there was probably still a falling out. I, I'm sure this is what that episode is going to explain. Yeah. There's. I, I'm willing to bet they're somehow going to justify that he was still a villain, but the transition from villain to hero was uh, more... Uh, it was kind of like in the Death of Superman movie where he's in he's on house arrest, mm. but because he helped save the city from Doomsday, they, gave, they him a... gave him a pardon and he was able to do what he needed to do. Mm. Mind the Gap saying it's obvious at this point in time that the Supergirl writers had no idea what Leviathan was going to be in the comic books and just did their own thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's very fair. Um, and to be honest, uh, having not read of it, Leviathan, but seeing exa- eventually where it went, I'm like, maybe this is a better idea. <laughs> maybe, maybe indeed. All right, we're over the halfway point of tonight's show. We're going to take a quick break, come back and talk comic book stuff right after these messages. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a moment with the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's SupermanHomePage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. SupermanHomePage.com, covering the world of Superman from the 1930s to today. News, reviews, rumors, and reports. SupermanHomePage.com, for all your Superman comics, TV shows, movies, cartoons, radio shows, and more. Everything you ever wanted to know about the man. Man of Steel and more. Superman Homepage.com. Thanks, Superman Homepage, for all the support over the years. I really appreciate it. I'm Matt Balmer, I'm the voice of Superman and Superman Unbound, and this is the Superman Homepage. Right here on Superman Homepage. I mean, it's not like I asked to be famous. Yeah, well, it's the price you pay. You sign a lot of autographs? Oh, yeah, you? Some, they ask me to bend stuff a lot. I could see that. <laughs> What? It's Lois. She's in trouble. Did you look through that building? Well, kind of. It's glass. Watch it. Whoa. Idiot. Lois! Superman, I've forgotten my wallet. I can't carry money in this. I'm powerless. I'm not. <laughs> What's with the spinning? He idolizes me. It's embarrassing. Hero. It's a huge comet hurtling perilously towards Earth. We're doomed! I think you better get this one. You can do more with the American Express card. Wait, could you? It's for my kid. And we're back on WGBS TV Live, where if you want to get involved in tonight's show, we might have time for some live callers make sure you head to Skype and search for Superman homepage and we may be able to talk to you in the second last half of our show. I was going to say half hour, but we're already over the half hour. So I did some Googling on the break and John Hames Newton is a year older than Dean Cain. Oh, wow. And two years younger than Helen Slater. There you go. Thank you, Google. So. All right. Well, that's that's very interesting. So it could definitely be... um, considered if they decided to recast the role. He's aged better than Dean Cain, I should say. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's that, that kind of zen meditation stuff that he does. Yeah. Probably, you know, just let a... Better for your and, 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 and it seemed like, to be fair, Dean Cain was a bit of a partier. So, mm. you know. Yeah. 
There you go. All right, turn our attention to comic books. And Superman number 21 came out this past week. Our reviewer, Adam DeChannel, is not on board with this. He gave it a 1 out of 5. I'm not surprised. Right. Yeah, he's, uh, he's he must have, I don't know, done some something awful in his uh, past life to get uh, get this uh, as his as his a uh, reviewing uh, task but um, it shows Mongol uh, we've got still got the whole thing happening in space where Superman's trying to save the United Planets deal that's going on uh, and in doing so he's mentioned that he spoke for Earth and somehow that's kind of come back as a video to Earth where the uh, a reporter from the Daily Star is going to write up a piece about Superman declaring himself king of the Earth and uh, confronts Lois about that. And uh, she realises that, geez, if he's king of the Earth, that means I'm queen of the Earth. Uh, it seems like a pretty lame thing to be worried about, considering uh, Superman would would not be of that kind of you know mind to do that. I guess he's you know it's kind of taken out of context. It just kind of seemed like a really pointless story or chapter to this story uh, of the truth yeah I, I, I wish I could add something to that I just I just feel really bad for Adam because I, I know what it's like to be in that when, when, when the assignment that you have is just doing absolutely nothing for you and it's just like how do I write I hate this differently than I wrote it last <laughs> month yeah, well, he says, uh, if anyone argues about the trunks, the glasses, the secret identity, I'm going to bring up the fact that a writer in 2020 made Lois Lane queen of planet Earth. <laughs> fair. Yeah, very fair. So uh, that was Superman number 20, with 21, sorry, which I've got the cover of there. Only one man stands between Mongol and the United Planets. Uh, the whole part of the Mongol air story w was not bad. Uh, this, by the way, is another Mongol, as in another junior Mongol junior, because he's killed his father, and that just seems to be a Mongol thing to do, is just to continually kill past iterations and take their mantle. But um, it, one Mongol is the same as the next. They all look alike, except for maybe a different chest plate. Are you saying they all look alike, Steve? That's racist. <laughs> They're all purple, bald-headed... I know, Muscle, yeah. I mean, muscles. Really, like, like when Mongol showed up in uh, when when Jeff Loeb took over as writer of Superman and brought Mongol in. I'm wondering if somebody had to tell him that that was the son of Mongol. And they had to do that like in post, basically, because really, if you didn't if you didn't read Underworld Unleashed, you had no idea that Mongol was dead. Yeah. And, and I'm wondering, I'm really curious to see how many people know that it was Underworld Unleashed where he died. Probably none, and probably none will know that he, uh, it was in Superman Villains number one that uh, Mongol, another Mongol died and was taken over by another son. Um, because it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, a Mongol is a Mongol is a Mongol. Yeah, it's, it's, is, he, is he a large... Or a uh, yellow skulled like behemoth that can throw down with Superman. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. Doesn't matter exactly. So we look ahead to what's available this week in the world of Superman comic books, and what we do have this week is Justice League number forty-three, which uh, continues the or well, actually con concludes the story involving the Eradicator, and that is available in a variant cover which is a bit weird some of the faces on that uh as our review you'll see tomorrow called it picasso like uh so <laughs> that's fair yeah you've also got uh jimmy olsen number nine out this week and this is available in a variant cover as well the fourth and final issue of he year of the villain hell arisen uh is available this week and that's available in a variant cover as well then you've got the Dollar Comics of JLA number one, and you've also got the trade paperback of Superman Volume Two, The Unity Saga, The House of L, and I absolutely love that cover. Yeah, I, I have to say that as much as I disagree with the direction the books took, man, Ivan Reese on his second go around with Superman uh, really just kind of not. If you were going to bring back the trunks, he was a really good choice to bring back kind of the grandeur of Superman. 
indeed, indeed. I just love Ivan's work, and I think uh, the more work DC give him on anything to do with Superman, the better off we are. Uh, whether the story is good or not, his artwork can uh, usually lift to any story, uh, in my yeah. opinion. All right, uh, DC Comics released their June solicitations this past week, and we highlighted for you all the Superman-related comics and products that were listed. And there are a number of ones that we will get to, but just looking at the Superman-related books, uh, we've got um, Action Comics 1024 out in June, um, and I'm guessing this universe people are not, uh, isolating themselves because they're all crowded into this uh, what appears to be a bar and Clark Kent aka Superman seems to be walking in the door the description for this one reads the city of Metropolis has been rocked by Luthor's latest attack and the drama surrounding Superman's truth and that gives the invisible mafia a new foothold to change the city of tomorrow forever meanwhile the Daily Planet is under siege the fallout from Superman villains continues as Clark Kent steps out into the world as a reporter for the first time yeah, it looks interesting. I mean, it's it's a cool looking cover at the very least. Yeah, even if it is a JRJR JR artwork. Yeah, well, you know, there's not much you can do about that. <laughs> no. Then we also have Superman number twenty four, and this is a uh, cover by Ivan Rice or Reese and Joe Prado, and it says uh, Superman's legendary susceptibility to magic is about to turn his life inside out and upside down. A mysterious new villain has come into Superman's world to pit him against the most powerful sorcerer and agent for the Lords of Order, Dr. Fate. <laughs> it's another cool-looking cover. Yes. Uh, I really like that. So, uh, Dr. Fate coming into the world of Superman. Uh, I guess when you don't use kryptonite, you use magic. Well, yeah, because Superman's vulnerable to magic, you know, like everybody else is. I don't know why this is a huge deal. Exactly. He's not... Not he's not invulnerable to magic, but neither is Batman. Yeah. So yeah, they just seem to be seem to be using it as Superman's second great weakness. But um, yeah, it is what it is. Also uh, listed in the uh, solicitations is uh, a couple of different things. We've got um, which one was first? Uh, deceased Dead Planet. Uh, so first off, you had deceased, then you had deceased Unkillables. And now you've got what he's saying is a sequel to DC's Dead Planet. Uh, the first issue says a corrupted after a corrupted anti-life equation turned billions into monsters, including Earth's greatest heroes. Our planet was as good as dead. Years later, a distress call brings Damian Wayne, John Kent, and Cassie Sandsmark, the Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman of Earth 2, back to a dead planet. But what will this new Justice League find waiting for them? If life still exists on Earth. Who or what is lying in wait for these heroes? You know, I really got to give it up to DC and Tom um, Taylor, Taylor mm -hmm. specifically. That man, he is able to just work these concepts into series after series after series. And I'm assuming that they do well because you don't. You would assume that if the previous mini series didn't wasn't all that good, that they wouldn't green light the next one mm. so yep that's uh, good Aussie talent there for you <laughs> there you go but uh, yeah good luck to Tom he's doing really well and uh, seems to be just going from strength to strength at DC Comics with uh, Injustice to started it off and now he's into the deceased he does seem to have this zombie apocalypse thing going for him yeah I I, I, I feel sorry for him because he's a big Superman fan and loves the traditional Superman, <laughs> he just seems to be just... tainted with this brush. Yeah, I, I would like to see him tackle a, you know, like a mini series, or give him like the next go round of the the Walmart books. Have him do like a, yeah. a straight up Superman series that they could reprint later. Yeah, because uh, he's he, it's not he's not by any means a bad writer. No. I just don't the like concepts. the subject matter. Yeah. Uh, also uh, out in June is the second issue of Dece, uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal number two. Um, Greg Capullo and uh, Scott Snyder revealed the cover artwork on social media a couple of days before the solicitations were released. And then DC did the same, gave us a look at not just this, but also some of the variant covers, 
including this uh, work in progress Lobo uh, variant cover by Jerome Opena or Pina Opena. Um, Get ready to scream! Wonder Woman roars across the horrifying dark multiverse landscape in the world's most demented monster truck with Swamp Thing riding shotgun. Uh, it's um, the two arrive at the ghoulish cemetery base of Batman and his army of zombies, but can the former friends stand each other long enough to form a plan and take back the planet? Plus, what's Lobo doing in space? Don't miss the second chapter of the wildest ride in the DC universe from the epic team of writer Scott Snyder and artist Greg Capullo. I hope people enjoy it. <laughs> you won't be reading it. No, no, not at all. So uh, check out the full June solicitations at our website for all the Superman listed items, um, including you know, the latest issues of Justice League, Batman, Superman. We've got Leviathan, Checkmate number three, featuring Superman. And there's also the final issues of Lois Lane and Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, both 12th issues are listed in the June solicitations and uh, are, as are a number of collected editions, trade paperbacks, hardcovers and graphic novels. So make sure you check them out, including one that's uh, a little cute little thing called Lois Lane and the Friendship Challenge. Uh, it seems to be mostly aimed at young adults, uh, you know, teenagers. So there were there were two of the collected editions that caught my eye. One is that they're doing another volume of the uh, initial uh, years of Eddie Berganza as editor in the in the two thousands. Uh, they're reprinting Critical Condition and a couple of other books. But the one that really caught my eye is apparently the Superman the Man of Steel omnibus that they had solicited last year has been canceled and is being replaced by a hardcover that's only printing a certain amount of the uh, of the book so the man the like the six issue man of steel series in the first four months of the superman books so uh i, I appreciate that they're still giving it the hardcover treatment i wonder why the omnibus didn't work out mm, interesting i don't know what uh the answer to that is but uh yeah superman the man of steel volume one hardcover out on the 22nd of july that's listed yep. for. And they're also doing a 75-year celebration book of Superboy, a hardcover, mm -hmm. which uh, will be out on the 1st of July. That, uh, you know, finally DC, with all that um, legal stuff behind <coughs> them, are able to celebrate Superboy they, the way they probably should. And that's going to be all of them, too. That's Connor, that's Dan that it's John, it's, it's going to be everybody, which uh, some of my... Some of my Silver Age Superman, Superman fans who uh, really like that version of Superboy are a little salty about, <laughs> uh, which I, I totally appreciate. But it's it's kind of neat that these... I don't know if we're going to get them every five years now. I really don't think like the 85th anniversary of these characters is really something you need to celebrate like that. Mm. Uh, but we had all those 75 books, you know, five, six years ago. Uh, now we're getting the 80... Uh, 80 version of that but with superboy it's the 75th so that kind of works out nicely yeah indeed now uh this survey that i uh learned about this week was a surprising and pl pleasant surprise uh according to a new survey conducted by one poll on behalf of visit anaheim.org superman is still america's favorite superhero someone tell dc yeah i was about to say uh that, that's that, as usual, polls uh, don't often reflect reality. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the don't people voting in this um, in this particular poll voted him to be the, the most popular superhero. Uh, but if, if you kind of look at merchandising and stuff, I, I'd argue that point. <laughs> yeah, I would. It's hard to find Superman stuff on shelves. Um, he came first by forty-seven percent with Spider-Man. I don't know how these work out because the percentages, if you add them up, add up to more than 100%. <laughs> 47, yeah, 46, 45, 42, and 41. I mean, that... What? what? They're, they're using that Bruce Wayne, Batman v Superman math. Uh, you know, where if it's if there is a 1% chance of something, it's 100% certainty. <laughs> so 47% uh, of the vote, well, 47% went to Superman... 
He topped the list. Uh, Spider-Man came second. Batman third. Captain America fourth. And Iron Man was fifth. It was a poll of 2,000 Americans. So it's not a large, um, you know, survey. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I, I'm happy that, that Superman came first. I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely take it. I just, uh, I, I just think it's amusing because it seems like it seems like in a lot of cases, especially coming from DC, and I don't know how that's going to change now that Dan DiDio is out, or if that is going to change, but it always seems to me that any kind of good, um, how do I want to say this, anything nice said about Superman always seems to be lip service. Mm. Uh, I remember when Superman turned 75 and, you know, like the the, the comments from Jim Lee, uh, who was public, was co-publisher at the time, was just like, well, Superman was the first and he's such an iconic character. But then the next year it's like, okay, let me tell you all the reasons why Batman is so awesome. Uh, and, and I think that's that's kind of just the general the general thing. But it seems to me... And this is all anecdotal evidence, because I've done no scientific polling on this. It really seems to me with nor like like people I encounter in like the normal world, there are a lot more Superman shirts popping up than there were in the last couple of years. Oh, great. There there's a lot of hats and it's like it, it just seems to be I don't know if it's just the crest or whatever. And I'm not saying that that's making Superman more popular than Batman, but it just seems like people are, are willing to fly that flag uh, more freely. Yeah, no, I would agree with you. I think it's uh, it's definitely seeing more Superman stuff amongst the general public. It just doesn't seem to be reflected in the merchandise side of things where you go, even if you go into the boys' clothing section, it's just Spider-Man yeah. and Batman and Iron Man and, you know, and then you'll see Superman as part of a Justice League thing, like similar to your shirt that yeah. you're wearing now, but you don't get to see much of the Superman standalone stuff as maybe you did once upon a time. Yeah, and, and, and that's slowly starting to change. I'm noticing a lot uh, within the boy, little boys, uh, like not that I really go through the children's section because that would be creepy. Uh, especially when I had my like full beard and, and looked like <laughs> really like you don't want this guy to be like, thank God. Whenever I would go see children's movies with my wife, she was with me, so it's not like the unattended middle-aged man sitting in the back. <laughs> but it's it's just interesting because I think what it speaks to is that while people may not want to read Monthly Adventures of Superman, uh, which I think is on DC to make more people want to read it, uh, I, I think as you have always said the symbol of inspiration superman just kind of stands above everything mm. so nowadays it doesn't seem to be nerdy or cliched or whatever to to support superman basically indeed well looking to the merchandise side of things as we get towards the end of tonight's show sideshow collectibles is now taking pre-orders for the superman Designer toy, a designer collectible toy by Unruly Industries. Now, uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, Truth, Justice, and the American Lace. The limited edition Superman designer collectible toy by artist Tracy Tubera practically soars through the sky wearing his very own set of fly Kryptonian kicks. Uh, obviously, this is a like a it's a series of different figures, but uh, this putting two kind of things together, mashing the superhero together with these uh, big shoes, basketball so, shoes. <laughs> so I usually do a joke at this point, but it's actually the opposite of the standard joke. This Superman did not skip leg day. No, he didn't. Uh, in fact, I, 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 I think he overdid leg day a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> and dude, really, start eat more carbs because that waste being that small, that's not healthy. I, I really am worried about the percentage of body fat you have right now. Uh, are popping out. The, the thing that I were that, 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 that really stands out to me is this is the rebirth outfit, the second rebirth outfit. Mm. And it just goes back to my, my, another joke that I have is 
the one job I would not want to have right now is anyone dealing with Superman merchandise over the last five years. <laughs> You've got so many costumes and variations to deal with. Yeah. Let alone, he's wearing sneakers on top of his red Superman boots. Yeah, so it's like this thing probably got approved like three or four years ago. Yeah, and then production <laughs> and everything. Look, Superman's hands are bigger than his head. Yeah, you well, know, he he he, he kind of looks like Johnny Bravo dressed up as Superman. <laughs> Indeed. So anyway, uh, it's an interesting thing. It's obviously not for everybody. Uh, I do enjoy the design of it, but uh, it's at one hundred and thirty-five dollars US. It's probably a little bit steep for what it is. Uh, it's estimated to arrive. Uh, December 2020 and March 2021 so uh, even then it's going to be even further down the track from the Superman Rebirth uh, costume uh, when it actually does come out yeah I <laughs> it, it okay so I poked fun at it it's not a bad looking no it's it's it really cool isn't. looking that, that is uh, it's really interesting when we get like these kind of adorbs or different yeah. variations uh, on Superman. It's a certain theme. Uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just glad that they're out there. Yeah. It's superheroes in sneakers is the uh, is the line that uh, the uh, they're calling them. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is. I guess you can do anything with the superhero characters. Well, that pretty much brings us to the end of tonight's show. Uh, it's been a good one, and we hope we've entertained you for the last hour, especially if you've been cooped up in your house and not going out anywhere. Um, but uh, before we sign off, I'd like to thank everyone for watching tonight's episode of WGBS TV Live. Once again, thanks everyone in the YouTube uh, channel there for participating with your comments and your questions as the show has gone on. And a big thank you to you, my co-host, Mr. Michael Bailey. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, pleasure as always, Steve. Now, a huge uh, thank you to our sponsors and patrons, Douglas Meacham, John Patrick Van Pelt, and Tina Murray. And if you want to sponsor the Superman homepage, please head to patreon.com slash Superman homepage. You too can sponsor our website for as little as $1. Now, the complete one-hour video of tonight's show will remain available on our website and our YouTube channel. If you perhaps tuned in late, missed part of the show, or want to watch it again in full, you'll be able to do that on those two locations. But we'll be back next week on Tuesday, March 24th at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time for another edition of WGBS TV Live. We'll look forward to talking with you then. Until then, be sure to check out supermanhomepage.com for all your daily news updates on everything surrounding the Man of Steel. I'm Steve Yunus. On behalf of myself and Michael Bailey, thanks for watching WGBS TV Live, brought to you by supermanhomepage.com. Stay safe, everyone. Stay healthy. And we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>